Over there in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, our Lord models this kind of behavior. Genesis 12 and 3, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Please understand that God is not content to simply soak up our worship offerings, thanksgiving, and praise. Uh, though the Bible declares that he inhabits the praises of us people, he, he is involved in all creation and pours out blessings abundantly and without boundaries. When you look at God's behavior, this behavior, his behavior is in contrast to human kinds of idols and false gods. In the Old Testament, people, when they worship the other gods, those gods demanded more but gave little return. We experience the same phenomenon today. If our career or our job becomes our God, it demands all of our attention. But it gives us little rest, security, or pleasures in return. Some of us worship our retirement plans. We tithe or give generously, yet we more, uh, the more we concentrate on this God, the less secure and more worried we become. And here it is, here it is, the big one. Many of us worship the God of possessions. We seek to find pleasure and affirmation in the more that we have. And what we receive from God, those God is limited and fleeting. But it is the desire of the King of Kings, the Lord of Gods, for all of creation to experience the fullness of God's kingdom. This is not some sweet by and by when we die, but the abundant experience of God's love, grace, provision, justice, and inclusion in the here and now. I need to pause there for a moment because I know we have a tendency to get caught up in these church cliches. And everything comes about when we get to heaven. Uh, we, we, we sing about it. We shout about it. We pray about it. And here's what happens. We start minimizing life here on earth. Because we are so wrapped up in getting to heaven. Let me pause there for a second time because I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but everybody that's talking about heaven ain't going there. Don't misunderstand me. Down here, we live to live again. But, but while I'm down here, I want to experience God's love, grace, provision, and his justice. Down here. Now, now, now I can hear you, some of you saying, Brother Pastor, you sound like you're giving me your own commentary on this. Uh, let me help some of y'all super intellects, super spiritual intellects. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we, we have different types of intellects, you know, now. Um, in this last 20 years or so, uh, there's been a big run on black intellect. My thing is, if you're an intellect, you're an intellect. And if I'm intellectual, I'm just intellectual and I just happen to be black. But now you got all kind of a series now on, on black intellects. And I'm, I'm not going to go there today, but in this, in this series, as I said earlier, I want to try to help us because uh, as a race, uh, we have to stop blaming everyone else for us not pulling together. When we look at the days of the civil rights movement, folks had, they, they pulled together in order to get something done. They pulled together, they created wealth and economic development in their own communities. Again, we, we will spend our money in communities that don't look like us and buy products that's not made by us. But in other communities, again, uh, they keep their money circulating longer than in the black community. We got to learn how to support our own. Somebody's saying, but Brother Pastor, get back on task. I didn't forget where I left off at. I left off, let me help y'all black spiritual intellects. We get excited about heaven. But go over there, let me prove to you uh, that uh, the Lord wants us to deal with 
things here on earth. Go over there, go over there in Matthew chapter 6. For, for some of you think I'm just making this up, let me take you to Matthew chapter 6, that familiar passage that, that y'all like to read, uh, uh, verse 10. Uh, here it is, we, 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 we model the Lord's Prayer. Here it is what it says. These are the words of Jesus Christ because it is, is written in red. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Heard the choir this morning. It's a good song. It's a highway to heaven. We, we marching up to heaven. We want to get to heaven. But, but you better learn how to do some stuff down here before you get up there. You know, yeah, I got an issue with folks talking about I'm going to heaven. and you, you haven't mastered down here what you're supposed to do down here. You can't even worship for two hours down here. How are you going to worship in heaven? You can't, you can't love and treat folks down here, right? How are you going to do it up in heaven? Folks talk about I'm going to heaven, but we have not mastered the principles down here. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why, here it is, here it is. That's why even in spiritual warfare, you got to learn how to operate in the earth realm and tap into the heaven realm. That's why the Bible says, he says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. In order for me to receive something from heaven, I got to do something down here. So, so he says we, we all want to see the manifestation of God down here. Look, look at this prophet Amos as he prophesies in, in this late 8th century B.C. during the reign of King Isaiah. The kingdom of David and Solomon, Israel golden era, was passed. And through the kingdom, though the kingdoms were split, there were many who longed for the good old days. They kept on looking back to Israel's former glory. And others believed that the nation was slowly deteriorating. Few believed that within less than 100 years, the nation of Israel will no longer exist. The time of the king, uh, Zion's reign was relatively prosperous. But it wasn't prosperous for everybody, just a few. There was a growing gap. I, I want y'all to see something here. I want y'all to see the, how, how history has a way of repeating itself. There was a growing gap between the rich and the poor. And in God's eyes, as expressed by Amos, uh, this was a time of growing injustice and unrighteousness. So Amos challenged the rich and powerful to share their power and wealth, as Amos proclaims in verse 24, he says, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And like most of us, the people of Amos' time agreed with the general principle of justice but struggled with the ramification of justice when it became personal. I'm all right with weeping and crying over the poor. Just don't mess with my money. I, I'm all right to look on pictures and images on TV when it concerns the marginalized. But, but don't, don't, don't mess with my pockets. And here it is, justice is by the standard by which the benefits and penalties of living in society are distributed. Throughout the Bible, justice is an important constant. It's part of our worship. Justice is a central characteristic of the kingdom of God. The people of God are called to seek justice, not just for themselves, but for others. Over there, uh, in Micah chapter 6, uh, that eighth verse, I want to read it out the NIV version. If you don't know how to get there, just turn. You ain't got to be embarrassed. Go to the table of contents. 
y'all, y'all want to be see you, you you flipping through you I'm I'm reading the script you still flipping through trying to figure it out you don't be deep just go to the table of contents somebody say thank you pastor for helping us now we got technology it's up on the screen I just helped y'all a little bit more <laughs> he has shown you oh mortal what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God, Israel, guilt and punishment? 